So today we want to talk about some key concepts of Traverse PC. We called it Works Like You Think, Understanding TPC. We tell people the learning curve for Traverse PC is steep, but it's short. And you really need to get the concept of views, traverses, and quick view kind of nailed down in your brain. And then the light bulb goes on and Traverse PC makes sense. So we, we like to offer a seminar like this uh, a couple times a year, mostly for people who are new to Traverse PC. Uh, so they can kind of get an idea of what are views, what are traverses, what are quick view. And I'm just going to focus on those three key concepts uh, today. Now, these same concepts are here in this How It Works. So if I drop down in here, we're going to see here's traverses, the natural way to organize data. Here's the views, the powers in the views. We include an extra one here about visible data, how you can see your data all the time. And then finally, a quick view. Your data does the drawing. We've always kind of tried to figure out how to explain this, but really it's, it's about starting right. And we say you go to a theater to watch a movie or stream it yourself to a screen, but that's not where the movie started. It started somewhere on a movie set with props, cameras, actors, then moved through production, editing, marketing, and distribution before it ever hits a screen. Well, as an LS, I know I don't start with my drawing. And that's really the problem with using CAD for land surveying. The drawing isn't where you start. What I start with is the research and all the data I pulled in. Then I move through decision making and editing and finally the drawing. And Traverse PC makes beautiful professional drawings, but it gets there through the technologies like Traverse's Quick View and Views. So that's why we say it works like you think. And it's really understanding these three components, traverses, views, and how the quick view interacts with them that really kind of opens the door to Traverse BC. So let's go ahead and jump in on our project today. And I'm going to go ahead and let's run Traverse BC. And I'm going to open up a sample survey called Learn Land XML. So you could open this file after the webinar and do this yourself. So Learn Land XML. And we're going to talk about views, traverses, and quick views as we import a subdivision from Civil 3D. I think it's a great little example. It's not too complicated. I think it'll help us kind of figure out how this works. So let's, uh, there's a blank survey. There's nothing in here. Let's go to File, Import. Let's tell it we want to do Land XML. And then go in and turn on some options. I want details. Uh, that looks good. Let's browse, and we include this sample XML file. And let's go ahead and import that. And here's the first thing I want you to notice, is that this is a file from Civil 3D. So in addition to having drawings for this project, I've also got 639 points. I've got 83 parcels. I've got six alignments. And I've got two surfaces, which also will have some points for those surfaces. So it kind of speaks my language in points, parcels, alignments, and surfaces. And Traverse PC understands that uh, really well. So Traverse PC and Civil 3D talk nicely to each other because we're, we're all, all talking about the same data. So I can select which of those I want to bring in, but I'm going to bring in everything and hit the OK button here. And Traverse PC is done now. And it tells me it brought in those points, parcels, alignments, and surfaces, and it's done. Now, I asked for details to be turned on. So we got everything it imported here in the message view. So I can take a look at, here are the points. And I've got point, description, coordinates for all those points. Now, I, I see that they're storing the uh, point descriptors in the attributes. That's fine. Traverse PC is comfortable with attributes as well as descriptions. Once I'm done with the points, and there's about 600 and some of those in here. I'm looking for the next section now. So now I've got parcels. So here's lot one and some basic information about it. There's six points in this area. Remember I had 83 parcels. After the parcels are the alignments and I've got six of those. So first avenue, second avenue, this is just whatever they called them in Civil 3D. Traverse PC doesn't really care. And then finally, I've got a couple of surfaces down here. So I've got existing ground of quarry, and uh, it looks like finished grade or final grade from 3D grid. 
So I've got points, parcels, alignments, and surfaces. Let's use this example then to talk about how we use Traverse PC to access this data. Let's start out with the points. So kind of keep that whole thing about points, parcels, alignments, surfaces in your, in your brain. And uh, we'll talk about all four of those here, but let's start with the points. So I've opened up the point manager here, and this is the first view. So these managers are listed over here. If I come up to the top of the program, there's the difference between managers. Managers um, give me a collection of things, like a collection of points or traverses or drawings, versus the windows that show me one thing at a time, one drawing or one traverse. So the managers are listed over here in this uh, group of tabs, and I've just clicked on points here. So we can come in and see what Traverse PC does with these points. Now, all the points from this import show up here. So here are my 600 and some points right off the bat. I'll just slide this over a little bit. You can see that. And for each of those points, I got a description and an attribute. Remember we said they stored this in attributes, not descriptions, and Traverse PC is fine with that. And then after I get through those 800 and some points, now I've got the points related to the EG surface and the points related to the FG surface. Okay, so all of those show up in the point manager. And the point manager is everything to do with points. Now, all of these managers can be picked up and they can just kind of free float here. They can be dropped down to the bottom of the view if you'd rather see them down there. I oftentimes pick this up and move them over to another monitor, so I have my full desktop to work with. But if I use this little control right here, we'll just dock them to the right. And then if I want, I can have those auto hide, or I can bring them back up. And you'll kind of learn how all this works in Traverse PC, and you'll kind of gravitate to whatever works the best for you. Let's talk about some things I want to do with points real quickly, because I just come to the point manager, which is a view, and I manage the points. Let's sort by elevations. So there's my least to greatest. Here's my greatest to least. So I can see real quick what my elevations are like in here. And I can do that with northing and easting as well to say I want to sort by northing, least to greatest, greatest to least. I can do things like that in the point manager and I'm just sorting the points because that's all that's shown in there. Uh, some people like to come in and have a printout of these points. And I don't care about the surface points, but let's go all the way up to the top here. And let's tell Traverse PC we want to print these out. So we're going to go ahead and print this. I'm going to send it to a PDF file just so you can see what that looks like here real quick. And Traverse PC will come over to the points and say, okay, I'm going to pull all those points out, write a PDF file for those. So that's what the little circle is there. It's putting that uh, print out together for us. And then as soon as that is opened up, we'll go ahead and save that. Yep, and let's overwrite the file that's there already. And then we'll let uh, the browser open it up for us and take a look at what we've actually got here. So here's all of our points. I should have said selected. I selected those points and then I printed out um, all of them here. So um, I can do those kinds of things with, with points in here. And there's lots of other things as far as going in and taking a look at specific points. I want to look at the properties of a, of a point here. I can go to point properties and say, okay, here's the coordinates of that. Might have a geodetic position if I'm using a coordinate reference system. Here's the status, whether it's a topo point or protected. I can override that symbol. So it always uses the same symbol in all the drawings. And I get a list of the traverses it's in. So anything to do with points, I do with the point manager. So that's a good place to start and just kind of get this concept of there's a view just for points and everything I do with points, I, I do there. So let's take a look at um, views and traverses and start talking about traverses now. So I'm going to click on the traverse manager. This is the second one we're going to look at. And look how we've got alignments, parcels, and then down at the bottom are the surface points, surface traverses. It's bring those up surfaces. So I've got these traverse groups in here, and I want to start by looking at 
the traverses that Traverse BC created for the alignments that we brought in from Civil 3D. So I'm going to access those traverses, those alignments, from the Traverse Manager because alignments are traverses, it's kind of where Traverse PC gets its name. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on alignments to select all of them, and then I'm going to click this box here to tag those. And when I zoom extents, here are all my alignments. So it's the tagging of those alignments that includes it in the drawing. And Traverse PC can have any number of drawings, and each drawing knows or remembers which traverses are tagged. So we just tag a traverse to include them. If I don't want to include them, I can unselect them, tag them to bring them back in, or I can say, I don't want to show all these. I just want to show the, the uh, Main Street one. Or I want to show these, but I don't want to show that one, or that one, or that one. See how that turns them off and brings them in? Or I just say, yeah, let's bring them all in again and tag those. So. I work with traverses in the Traverse Manager, and just like I work with points in the Point Manager, I come to Traverses to work with the Traverse Manager to work with the traverses. Now, I want to talk about this alignment group real quickly here. Um, if I come in and take a look at groups, and I've got Traverse groups here, tra Traverse groups allow us to group related traverses together. So I've got all the alignments in a group, all the partials in a group. But if you look down here, I've got a group for deeds, a group for easements, um, a group for um, research, for setbacks, for stakeout, for topo. I mean, all kinds of these. We provide some standard uh, traverse groups with uh, Traverse BC when we ship it. But you're certainly welcome to come and add your own to an individual survey or you can add your own and make it available to all your surveys. So these are pretty extensible here, and they're a great way for you to come in and say, okay, I wanna work with a different group name, just name that, and then I'll show you in a moment how we move traverses into those, those groups. Now, let's open up a traverse view. So we looked at the point view, the traverses view, these are both managers. Let's open up this loop traverse. I'm gonna open it just by double clicking it. And Traverse BC is going to say, okay, to open that, what do you want to do? How do you want to show this? Well, I'm going to choose a format for that view called alignments because I want to see stationing and some curve stuff. And I'm going to choose a Traverse drawing settings called alignments also. And this determines how it gets drawn. So let's go ahead and open up that Traverse now and see what we've got. So this is that loop Traverse. And notice that we've got stationing in here because we included that. We've got radius, arc length, and delta. And some of these courses are curves. So that's why this type says PC, point of curvature, PT, point of tangency. So I know where the curve starts and ends and what some basic values are for that. Um, and I can come in and format this however I want. So view, format view, and I can include these letters in any sequence I want. So if I want to show stationing first, I can just move the stationing character before the bearing, and I can show stationing first. I can add other curve information, spiral information for spirals into this format to display whatever I want for that traverse. Now, I said real quickly that we had some curve information here. I'm just seeing radius, arc length, and the delta. The grid bearing and grid distance would be the long chord. So this would be the long chord bearing and distance. But watch, I'm going to highlight the PT and come up here to Kogo, horizontal curve. And look what I get. I get everything there is to know about that curve. So I can come in and tell Traverse PC to hold certain things. I can hold the position of the PC and the PT, and I can modify everything else. I can, so I can change the um, shape of this curve, the size of this curve or I can just come in here and report it all. So this is a great way for me to come in and dive a little deeper when I need to, in addition to information shown in the Traverse view. Of course, I'm gonna hit a summary button, and we're gonna see that Traverse BC will just send all that curve information out to a report. And a lot of you, um, like I've done for years, uh, I keep a report, at least one going on a survey all the time,
to bring information in like this. I call it my chicken tracks. So I can know what I was looking at, and what I was thinking about. And I can just come down and make some notes here real quick that, um, hey, I brought this curve in. Um, the uh, PC and PT uh, were gone in the field. Make some notes about it, okay? Pretty nice for me to be able to come in and, and just open that up real quick and uh, have a summary of that one curve. Or I can print this out just like I printed out those points earlier and I have all that information in a printout. Or I can also send that printout to the report. In fact, let, let's do that. So go to Tools, Print, uh, Pen to Report View. So we're going to take whatever format was in that traverse and the same report where I had the curve information a moment ago. Now I'm going to print out that traverse. So I've got the radius, arc length, delta, all that information, just like I had in the traverse view. But now I've got it in a report. Yeah, let's save the changes to that. Okay, so I want you to see how we can come in and um, open up that loop traverse in the traverse view. How we can come in and look at specific information like a horizontal curve. And then I'm going to introduce you to another view real quick, um, the vertical curve view. So this is a, an alignment. So in addition to having horizontal alignment, that was that PC, PT, could be spirals. Okay, and we saw that the curve information here. Traverse BC also stores vertical alignment for that traverse. And now I've got vertical points of intersection, the VPIs. I've got the vertical curve lengths in and out. They don't have to be equal. I've got my grades in and out. And then Traverse BC is going to create beginning of curve, end of curve for vertical curves, just like it does PCs and PTs for horizontal curves. And, and this is a good time to talk about the fact that I'm not always doing vertical alignments on everything. So I may not visit this vertical curve view for a long time. That's just fine. I know that view is there for me to manage vertical curves when I need to. But most of the time, I'm just going to spend my time right here in the traverse view. Okay, so we're talking about views and traverses now. Let's just recap real quick that we went to the point view to look at points. We went to the traverse view or traverse manager, we call those, to look at the traverses. We started by looking at the alignment traverses, and we just double click the loop to open it up in the traverse view and actually see the data uh, that was in that view. Okay. Let's switch over to parcels then. Uh, right below the alignments is a group called parcels. And uh, remember I said in this land XML, we're gonna talk about points, alignments, parcels, and surfaces. So we've talked about points and alignments. Now let's talk about parcels. Parcels are traverses also, okay? So if I select all these parcels and tag one of them, now Traverse BC draws all the parcels in there for me. And I'm going to do something with groups here just real quick. I noticed that uh, when I was in here earlier, the last traverse in here is actually the property boundary for the whole thing. It's not a lot. So watch what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to select that property boundary. I'm going to go to Tools, Traverse Groups, Move Selected Items to Group. Okay, so I want to put this in a Boundaries group and OK that. So now I've got alignments and I can collapse those because we've already looked at that. I put my property boundary, and I don't even have to draw that, in a boundaries group. And now I've got the parcels to work with. Pretty neat, huh? And I've got 83 parcels in here, 82, 82 parcels in here, uh, the same that Civil 3D had. And they were parcels or lots in Civil 3D, they came in as parcels or lots in Traverse BC. And the great thing is it works the same way with GIS. Uh, a parcel in GIS comes in as a parcel or a lot in Traverse BC. So Traverse BC is as comfortable exchanging data with GIS as it is with Civil 3D because the data kind of works. It kind of, everyone kind of knows what we're talking about uh, both places there. I'm going to give you a real quick sneak peek into to quick view just because I want you to kind of see um, what the lot numbers are here. So I'm going to come back in and select these traverses. I'm going to right click any one of them and go to traverse drawing settings. 
And because I have all of these traverses selected, or more than one selected, Traverse BC says, what do you want to do? Well, I don't want to do setbacks. I just want to label the lots. So I'm now going to change the lot labels for all the lots in one shot. And, and I love having just the one Traverse setting tab come up like lot labels, because all I'm going to change are lot labels. Those other traverses can have all their own settings for other things, and I'm not going to modify those. So it's a really a good thing for me to uh, be able to just pick and choose here. So let's tell Traverse BC we want to put the lot name in there as a label. We want to do the area and the square feet. I'm not going to change the sizes or the fonts. Let's just hit OK. So wow, here we've got all of those lot labels in there. And all we did was press a button to do that. So that's kind of a real quick sneak peek at the um, quick view. And I don't want to spend a lot of time right here because uh, we're going to come back and talk about quick view in a minute. But isn't that great now for me to just be able to label all those lots real quick? And now I just want to drop in on this um, lot 21 here and take a look at um, kind of how the views interact a, a little bit. So I'm going to come into this traverse. And I'm going to say, go to Traverse Tools, delineate this Traverse. And you see how every line that's drawn by the Traverse is highlighted? Every point label, symbol, lot label that's drawn by this Traverse is highlighted. This line isn't because it was, it was drawn by Lot 20. But look what happened. I said, highlight or delineate that Traverse for me. And Traverse PC came over and selected that Traverse for me in the Traverse Manager. That's something we call synchronization. Watch what happens when I go to the Traverse Manager and I select Lot 20. See what it did with the delineation? It moved it to Lot 20. I come to Lot 22. Now Lot 22 is delineated. I can't tell you how valuable that is when I come back to a project I haven't been in on for uh, weeks or months or sometimes even years. And I come in and I can simply select a Traverse and it delineates it for me in the drawing or I can delineate something in the drawing and it shows me where the traverse is. So it makes it real easy for me to kind of coordinate this. And well, why do I want that? Okay, well, in this particular case, maybe I just want to check what the closure is on that. So I'm going to right click, go to open traverse and the closure view. And here's a new view called the closure view. The closure view is a snapshot of that traverse. So I know I'm in lot 22, and I know that it's got an area of 6280239 square feet, 1.442 acres, and it actually closed flat because I'm ending with the same point I started with, so there's no error in there. Uh, the way that they sent these parcels to us from Civil 3D and Land XML was that they started and, and ended with the same point. I call that closing flat, so there's no error reported there. Um, but the closure view now lets me get the area of this. And, and I just want to um, stop here real quick and, and say, OK, let's come back over here to this manager, Traverse Manager. And look, I've got square feet and acres included here. And the reason I have those included is that I came down and I formatted this just like I did the Traverse view. Remember, I could include the columns I want. And I included a B for square feet and A for acres. And what I want you to see is that for lot 22, we've got 6280239. And in the closure view, we've got 6280239. We've got 1.442 acres. In the Traverse Manager, we've got 1.442 acres. And those same values are showing up for us here in the lot label. So 62802 square feet, 1.442 acres. Pretty simple. Um, if I don't want that many decimal places on that uh, acres, I just go into lot labels again. And I say, you know, for the decimals here, I want acres to just show two decimals. Now every acreage that's shown for a lot label shows just two decimals. That, that's just phenomenal. This whole thing about synchronizing um, views is just pretty incredible. 
Uh, an, another thing that I do real often as part of the synchronization is that I'll come into a point like 17 and I'll highlight the end of the line or the symbol or the point label and I'll say edit Traverse. Well, Traverse PC opens up not only the Traverse that drew that, in this case the Lot 21 Traverse, but it selects Lot 21 in the Traverse Manager and it selects the point I right clicked on in the Traverse view. And I can tell Traverse BC now that I want to delineate that point, just like I delineated a Traverse in the drawing. So as I move from these from point to point here, see how it's always recentering and putting that point in there for me, delineating that. I just think that's phenomenal. Here's 286. So I can even synchronize points between the views, just like I synchronize traverses and delineate them to show where I am in the traverse. It's that's just kind of a cool neat thing that I that I do quite a bit. Okay. So I wanted to spend just a few minutes talking about how these views are synchronized and you're getting a, a picture here that okay, I've got a traverse manager or a traverses view for to list all the traverses, but I can show the same air information for each individual traverse in that traverse manager that I can show in the traverse view for that traverse the closure view for that traverse, or the drawing uh, for that traverse. It's, it, it's kind of neat. So, and the great thing about all that is that I generally will come into the traverse itself and say, well, I need to change this curve information. That radius should have been 300 feet, okay? Well, as soon as I change that radius from 280 to 300 feet, the configuration of this traverse changes. The area changes, okay? I'm not going to change necessarily the PC or PT, but I could. I could have a, have a point of intersection, and when I reduce the radius, I could slide the PC and PT closer to the point of intersection. That would change the configuration. But all those changes then automatically get reflected in how this traverse is labeled, the line labels, the area, how the areas are reported here in the Traverse Manager. I don't have to go in and update any of those. Just by changing the data for that traverse, all that information is propagated out to the views and updated automatically. So I just can't hardly say enough about uh, the fact that those views are synchronized. And, and I'm real typically going to work with just a few views like that. I'm going to work with the points manager, the traverses manager. I'm going to come in and open up one of these traverses in the traverse view and maybe take a look at the closure for that traverse to just check something out. So I've used one, two, three, four views plus the drawing. So it's real typical, and I'm likely to spend most of my time in a certain combination of views like that uh, that I use. Um, remember I said when we looked at uh, the land XML file, we had points, alignments, parcels, and surfaces. So let's uh, drop in and take a look at the surfaces in a Traverse PC. I've got two surfaces that I imported from the land XML file. One was e.g. for existing ground of quarry, and they included the description for that, which is great. And the other is FG, finished grade, uh, from the 3D grid. Now, surfaces are their own thing. Uh, they're not points or traverses, but they use points and traverses. And uh, let's just talk about uh, how this works. So I'm going to tag the existing ground so you can see what that looks like. And I've just got the major contours shown. Or I can untag that and tag the finished grade. Okay. And again, I've just got the major contours shown. So let's drop into these surfaces and just kind of take a look at what's in here. So just like I double clicked a traverse to open it in the Traverse Manager, in the Surface Manager, I'm just going to double click that surface to open it. And let's come in and take a look real quick at uh, what's in here. So these are the surface properties. You don't get a view for this. Uh, there's not a a individual view for each surface, but you get this uh, dialog with all these tabs here. And I can come in and say, okay, here's that description. I'm just using the points in a traverse, and the traverse that those points are in is called the existing ground of quarry. And um, we'll drop down and take a look at that real quick. Can I get back? Yeah. Okay, so let's close parcels, boundaries, alignments. Here's my surface traverses. Here's that existing ground of quarry. So this is the that's the traverse 
that Traverse BC is using to store the points for um, this surface. So this, the other surface is using this Traverse, the points from the 3D grid Traverse. So I can look at the basic information and here's all the area, and maximum, minimum elevations, that sort of thing. But I can come over here to contours and say, you know what, I'd like to draw the minor contours at one foot intervals. And I can apply that and get my minor contours in there. Or I can change the colors of those, or I can smooth the contours, or change the decimals that are displayed on the uh, contour labels. Okay, Or tell Traverse BC I want to label the major contours, but not the minor ones. So I just added labels on those. So there's a contours tab. Uh, some of you are interested in editing the tin. <laughs> you can do that here. But look at, here's my exclusions. So I can have exclusions in there. If I brought in break lines to do better modeling of the surface, I can do that. There's also volume. So I can tell Traverse BC to compute the volume and shade where the cuts and fills uh, are at. And that's great when I'm comparing this to another surface. I can now have my cuts or fills from the existing to the finished grade and all my volumes are computed for me. Okay. And then a slope analysis, I can come in and shade the uh, slopes that are between 10 and 20 percent or 20 and 40 percent or 40 and 60 percent and add up the areas of those and include that in the legend. So lots of stuff I can do here with the surface once I've opened it up. So I use the surface manager to manage the surfaces. So I wanted you to see real quickly that the surface manager manages surfaces for me just like the traverse manager manages traverses. And you get the feeling right away that if I learn to use one of these, like if I learn how to add traverses or delete traverses, I know how to add surfaces or delete surfaces. Same with the drawings. Okay. So learning one view helps me kind of run the other views. So let's just recap views and traverses real quick before we jump into um, the quick view stuff. So the managers show a collection of something, and that's what I've got here. Collection of points, traverses, drawings, and surfaces. And those are all up here at the top in this manage menu. Okay, so point codes are another one we're not gonna look at today. Um, the views or windows are the things that open one of. So I can have one vertical curve open for a traverse, or I can have a closure view open, one closure view for a traverse. And I can have multiple closure views for different traverses open at the same time. Like I can have multiple traverse views open, but these show me just one thing at a time. So um, there's a message view, a report view, and you'll kind of learn what these are as you go, but keep, keep those separate. There's managers and then there's windows. They both are views though. And then I'm going to say this once again, that once you learn the views that you use most, and most of you are going to use the point manager, the traverse manager, and the drawing manager, okay, to manage points, traverses, and drawings. Once you, once you learn those views that you use the most, you pretty much know how to run Traverse PC. So it's, that's kind of why we say that learning curve is, is um, steep, but it's short. Once that light bulb goes on, you've got it. Okay, so remember in that um, works like you think, we said there's this concept of traverses. They're the natural way to organize data. There's the view, and we say the power is in the views. And then we introduce you to this whole thing called quick view. Your data does the drawing. And, and I'm just going to read this. We can't say enough about our QuickView technology. You get to see what your data looks like without drawing it, without fiddling with those drawing commands you can never remember how to use. You just learn things like control, side shots, lot labels, and QuickView does the rest. So let's, let's come in and talk about QuickView. Um, and let's do this as we add um, automatic lot setbacks. I think that's that's kind of a fun way to show this, and I think it'll help us kind of figure this out. So remember, we said uh, we're going to use Civil 3D's terminology and call these parcels, and we brought in 82 of those. So a parcel is just a traverse, um, and it matches up really well with what Land XML and Civil 3D called a parcel. Okay, now Civil 3D sent us for all these parcels what their lot setbacks were. So let's just open one of these, go into properties, traverse properties, and let's go into setbacks. 
So from Civil 3D, we, we have this information. The setback from the front property line is 15 feet, and from both the side and rear property lines, it's 10 feet. So we see there are kind of two components to um, setbacks. One is the setback distance, and the other is knowing each property line, knowing whether it's a front setback, a side, or a rear. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and do this. Let's select these, just like we turned on a lot labels. Okay, let's come in and go into Traverse Drawing Settings. But in this time, instead of labeling the lots, let's do the setbacks. And this is pretty simple. All I'm going to do is select a line type that I want. And I like to do something like, like a dash 2. I select, select the thickness and the color, and I choose OK. There's all of my setbacks created for me. And I'm going to untag these alignments so we don't have to look at those as well. Yep, and boundaries untagged. So we're looking good there. OK, so Traverse PC just came in and drew the setbacks for me. And we're going to stay focused in on this lot 21 a little bit. So you just saw a quick view in action. The data does the drawing based on the traverse drawing settings. Remember, I came into these traverses and I said, right click, traverse drawing settings. So each traverse has settings that tell Traverse PC how to draw it. Line type, line thickness, color, point symbols, point labels, lot labels, and in this case, automatic setbacks. Um, it's important also to understand here that only traverses with a closure type of closed loop will have setbacks available. So in, in, if you've got a traverse that isn't showing setbacks, you go to the closure view, and you saw how I opened that earlier, and you make sure that traverse is set to a closed loop, and then it will generate these setbacks for you automatically. Okay. So remember I said there were two parts, uh, setback distance, and then uh, knowing what kind of setback line type you have, front, side, rear. Let's start out taking a look at the setbacks. So I'm going to drop into one of these traverses. I'm going to go into Traverse Properties. Now because I don't have multiple traverses selected, it just takes me right in. So for this traverse, here's all the properties for this traverse. And one of these properties is a setback. So here's that 15, 10, and 10 that we got from Civil 3D. Um, it's great. You know, Civil 3D understands that in a subdivision, I've got uh, setback requirements. And so it carries that information in Civil 3D, just like Traverse PC does. So we're just exchanging that information. And um, we got these setbacks from Civil 3D. But if I were generating these traverses inside of Traverse PC, I would go into the survey information, and the survey also has setbacks. Now they happen to be set the same, uh, 15, 10, and, and 10. And I don't know if it got this from Civil 3D or if these were just the defaults, but I can save and recall settings for different jurisdictions, or I could reset these back to the default uh, values. And, and here's how Traverse PC uses these. Every time I create a new traverse, that traverse inherits these setbacks. Now, I can change them after the traverse is created, make them whatever I want. But having setbacks for the survey helps them to be consistent. So all the traverses start with the same setback values. Now, um, it could be that's how Civil 3D does it too. I don't know. I think all of these lots have the same front, side, rear setbacks. And that's generally how I expect these to work. Okay, so how are the setbacks drawn. Let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to select all the parcels again. And let's say Traverse Drawing Settings. And we want to go to the setbacks. If I, I'm going to come back in here just a minute. I don't, don't want to go past that too fast. When I have multiple traverses selected, I certainly can come in and make the control points all the same for everything so they all have the same line labels and symbols. I can make them all smooth polylines or not. I can make the fill all the same. Um, but what if I have differences in here because they're phase one or phase two or the primary lot I'm surveying and all the adjacent lots? Well, um, this Traverse Drawing Settings tabs lets me select 
which of these this data I want to change for all the traverses that I've selected. So this is a, a way to kind of zero down or zero in on, on this and say, you know what, I only want to change the setbacks for all these traverses. So it's letting letting me do that, which is which is just great. Okay, so I'm going to choose OK. And now I get to tell it how I want to draw these. And and you saw I came in and selected any line type that I wanted. I can select a line thickness and I can select a line color. And and I'm just covering this again because I want to hit OK and talk to you about Quick View technology. So what the what Quick View just did, it came in and created all of these drawing objects, CAD calls them entities, automatically for each lot line based on those traverse drawing settings. So this is a, a drawing line. I could have drawn this line manually, but I didn't have to. Um, and the great thing about it, as you're going to see in a minute, is that Traverse BC is free to update that according to whatever the setbacks are or the setback types are. But look, it's a regular line. It's a lot setback line. It's a tangent from 281 to 285 drawn by the lot 21 Traverse. And I can come in and get the fact that it's a tangent that's 287 feet long, the bearing of the tangent, and I can get the endpoints of that. So I've got all the information for that line as if I had drawn it, but I didn't have to. And if we look at the size of this with 82 lots, it's a good thing I didn't have to because I created all those setbacks in just a second. I mean, I just hit OK and it drew them for me. And that's really what, what Quick View does. Okay. Now, remember I said if I change the configuration of the traverse, everything changes with it. So if I change the configuration of any of the boundary points in the lot 21, these setbacks are going to update automatically to fit that. Okay, this will this will really change your life, and it's the reason why people prefer Traverse BC. We kind of we kind of make drawing simple like this, and I think fun. And it's just another way that um, the views synchronize. So the the setbacks get their position from the points and the traverse data in those other views. Okay, that's uh, just a great great way to see that now. Some of you are asking about layers. So if I go up to Tools, Layers, I do have a Setback Lines layer. And I can turn that layer off, and all the Setback Lines get turned off, or I can turn that layer on. I can protect that layer so nothing gets moved. I can lock that layer, all the typical CAD type stuff. So layers are in there, and you do use them sometimes. Not real often inside of Traverse PC, but sometimes. Okay, remember I said there are two parts to uh, setbacks. One is the distance, one is the setback type. And I'm just going to wrap it up here in the next couple of minutes and then open up for questions. So let's talk about setback types. Here's what that looks like. I'm going to go into the front of this lot and I've got a setback uh, lot line from 280 to 281. That's this line right here. So if I put the cursor over it, it's a curve from 281 to 280. We don't care about the direction of it. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to specify setback type. Now, initially, all, this, all the property lines, all the lot lines are side. They're set to side because that's the most common. But I can come in now and set this one to front and watch what happens. Did you see that move back? I just set that to front and it moved back. If I go back and set that back to side, it puts it back. Set it to front, moves it away. Okay, that is pretty, pretty neat. Now, I could go in and uh, set all of those like that if I wanted to, but watch what I, I normally do. Remember, I said I could right click 17 and I could come in and edit traverse. I'm going to come into the view format now. In fact, let me do this first. Just like I selected all the traverses to change the traverse drawing settings, I'm going to select all the traverses to go to the traverse view format. And I'm going to select just the format because I want all of these traverses to include um, the lot setbacks. Okay, that's a lowercase l for setback type. So I'm going to put a lowercase l in front of the bearing. So now all of these traverses have got that in their traverse view. Now let's open the Traverse for 17. 
edit traverse. Okay, do you see what I've got here? And I'm going to make this single line so I can shorten it up just a little bit. Well, I won't. Um, I want you to see the, the difference between these, these points here. I'll hide this, drag this over. Okay, so this setback line from 281 to 280, let's find that in here. Here's 281 to 280, that's a front. Huh, interesting. So 17 to 285 is right here. If I look at the, the status bar down here, it says F for front, S for side, R for rear. I can do R. Make that a rear. 286 to 17 is the bottom one here, so I'm going to make that a rear. Okay, neat. Now I'm going to go into the properties for this traverse. And just for the fun of it, let's go to setbacks. And let's say the rear should be 5 feet. Okay, look what we just did. We just redrew that setback at 5 feet because that was the setback distance for rear lot lines. And we just told Traverse PC that 17 to 285 is a rear, 17 to 286 is a rear, and the front is 280 to 281. I could have done the same thing here with the front and said, okay, let's go into Traverse Properties and let's make that a 25 foot setback. Now we have a 25 foot setback. Okay. So I, I don't want to belabor this whole thing about automatic lot setbacks because that, that's not what this webinar is about. But I do want to just emphasize how these views all work together. Um, and again, lot 21 is highlighted because that's the lot I was working in. Kind, kind of neat. And, and how the views and the traverses kind of come together in this quick view technology to really do all the drawing for me. I'm, I mean, I can still come in and move all these things around because they're just, they're just drawing objects. So I can modify those or do whatever I want to after the fact, but I didn't have to create all of them and put them where they belong. Traverse BC did that for me because quick view kind of brings together these traverses and views in a really, really powerful, powerful way. I'm just looking at my notes here. Let me wrap it up. Um, by saying this. What we did here today is very simple. We just imported a subdivision via Land XML and we put lot labels and setbacks on some parcels. Okay, that's that's really simple. And you know, simple stuff like this should be fun. And I think this is fun. I, I really enjoy using Traverse PC like this as opposed to opening a CAD program, which I did, you know, decades ago and having to draw all this stuff or drawing it and then not having data to back it up. So if I made changes, I it, it was just a lot of work. I mean, so much work. And CAD still is that way. Uh, Traverse PC says, no, you give me the data. Tell me how you want to draw it. I'll draw it. And then you can modify it however you want. But I want to tell you that Traverse PC can certainly handle more complex workflows, but it does it the same way. It does, as, does it with Traverse's views and the quick view. And that's why we can we can make the promise that I made you earlier that once you learn the few views you use the most, you know Traverse PC. And I can translate what I learned to do in the Traverse view over to the drawing view or the surface view or the point codes manager or the you know any of those things. And it's kind of a transferable learning kind of thing that happens there.